with her perspective on Liz Truss's speech. I thought it was a perfectly decent conference speech. I think she was very clear about what she's trying to achieve as a Prime Minister. I think it mirrored a lot of messages that she had put out there during the Conservative leadership campaign. I think maybe the challenge also, though, is that, in a sense, it hasn't addressed any of those fundamental gaps that we saw open up during this Conservative Party conference, this sense that almost we got to the end of the leadership contest, and yet it feels, I think, for the public, like somehow it's still going on in the, in the Conservative Party right now. I have to say, uh, I've been to quite a lot of Conservative Party conferences uh, in my time, quite old now, but I haven't really been to one quite like this. Uh, Liz Truss abandoning her flagship, one of her flagship policies, the 45p uh, abol abolition of that rate of tax, 24 hours after defending it. And then since then, it's been a free-for-all with different cabinet ministers coming out, commenting on different policies. Has the Prime Minister's authority completely gone? I think it's really difficult, Sophie, you're right. From my perspective, you could see this U-turn coming down the track really the week before. Obviously, to have it at conference was probably the most damaging time you could have it um, as an incoming prime minister. And I think the concern from my perspective was when you listen to people like Michael Gove talking about his opposition to it, it was very values-based, actually. It wasn't just about a narrow policy question on 45 pence um, the income tax rate. And sure enough, the next day, we then moved on to a debate about whether benefits should be uprated in line with inflation. So my concern for the party is that there are these different camps that fundamentally have different views and different values, perhaps, about where they want the party to go. And that doesn't just get resolved by one or two policy, sh policy shifts. And I think that's the debate that will go back into Parliament when everybody arrives back in the House of Commons on Monday next week. I'm interested to know your own position on this. You know, when you were in Parliament, you were always someone who championed social mobility, uh, for example. Um, what, what side of the debate are you on? So, you're right. I mean, for me, any of these policy questions, I would look at through the lens of, does this help drive social mobility? Does it help drive levelling up? <laughs> There's no doubt that when you look at the benefits situation, actually people slipping into debt is often very hard for them to get out of and therefore making sure we mitigate that risk that people are really worried about over the coming months, I think is very important. So the, the benefits question, I think it is important from my perspective that that stays in line with inflation. But of course, this is a debate for the, the parliamentary party. Liz was very clear that she didn't, believe in more handouts. And so I don't think the position she's taken, Sophie, is a particular surprise. I think on the broader package, obviously, doing the cost of living package made sense. I would have liked to see, you know, I said this on your programme in the summer, her and Rishi Sunak come together on that earlier in the summer, have got that out of the way. And that probably would have bought her much more time as an incoming prime minister to work out a full growth plan that included how she was going to pay for the measures, as well as setting out the measures in more detail. And I think it's been mixing up and muddling, in a sense, those things together that's been extremely difficult for her. I, I think the key thing, frankly, from my perspective, that I still want to see from this incoming government is a much more ambitious plan on skills. I'd actually like to see an emergency skills budget that addresses key issues that are holding back growth, like the fact that the apprenticeship levy itself for businesses is stopping them from investing billions of pounds in developing schools. There's some really practical issues there, Sophie. I hope that once people are back in Parliament, that they can then get on and set out what they're going to do as a new government to, to deal with them. It's been an incredibly difficult beginning uh, for Liz Truss uh, as uh, Prime Minister. I think that is uh, absolutely clear. She's had a U-turn on some of her policies already. Uh, she's, her, under, her authority has been undermined uh, by some people around her in Cabinet. We've seen poll leads for Labour that we haven't seen since the early days of Tony Blair. Do you think there's any chance that the Conservatives could win the next election with Liz Truss as Prime Minister? I think you, could, you can always have some chance of pulling things round, turning them round. If you'd said to um, Labour activists after the 2019 election, when they had this huge landslide defeat by Boris Johnson, what, that they'd be 33 points they ahead at any point. Leader. They changed leader, though. 
True, but again, you look at Keir Starmer, he was won by election away, Batley and Spen, from probably being replaced. So all we know, Sophie, is that politics is extremely febrile. But the bottom line is, whatever the politics, this is a time of crisis for Britain economically. There's the war in Ukraine. What people actually want to see is the Conservative Party now coming together. It's had its leadership contest. It cannot keep on going. So those differences need to be resolved one way or another in Parliament. That's not just something I want to see. That's a lot of the activists I spoke to at Conservative Party conference want to see that too. Because the most important thing is actually less the party and more the fact that it's a party in government and it needs to deliver on addressing many of those crisis issues that people are really worried about day in, day out at the moment in the wider country.